speech, I want to know your thoughts on rules. If you think rules were made to be followed, raise your hand. Nobody? Bro, <laughs> rebels here? Nice. If you think rules were made to be broken, raise your hand. Yes. yes. I believe rules were made to be tested, to be challenged. Therefore, tonight, I am going to break a world Toastmaster record. I am going to say the most ums and ahs and, and all those spelled words in one speech. So I'm gonna, to warm up, let, let me just say like, um, let's say five of each. How does that sound? Okay. Um, 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 um. Uh, 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 uh. Like, 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 like. Um, um, what else? What else? Oh, well, 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 well. <laughs> I know a bunch of you must be thinking, Alice has gone cuckoo. She's gone nuts. <laughs> well, let me tell you the reason behind this all. The reason for the topic is because, A, when I see rules, the, the little rebel in me just goes like, I do not like to be told what to do. Is this, is this really right? I question things. And another reason is because about two months ago, I went to this workshop hosted by one of my friends. And I was, as I was sitting there listening to his presentation, I started to think to myself, my gosh, so many hums. I should, I should, I should, I should really get him to join Toastmasters. <laughs> of what I've learned from Toastmasters, like, oh, like you can improve this part this way and that way. And about halfway into the speech, I'm like, wait, hold on. Something's not right here. I noticed that I was so focused on my Toastmaster do list, do not list, that I was distracting myself from immersing myself in the content of the speech and actually learning, which is like, it's not, it's not good. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so I decided to reflect on it. And the way I reflect on things is first, I want to neutralize my feelings towards ums and odds because from what we learned at Toastmasters, what I learned from my mentors who teach speeches, Uns and ahs are, are bad. And whenever I hear Alice, seven ahs, in my mind, I'm like, oh no, shish kebab. This is a terrible speech, and I beat myself up for that. And it ends up in a terrible spiral. <laughs> and so, so, hey, so this time around, I decided to say, hey, uns and ahs happen for a reason. They have meaning. They, serve a purpose. It might be because the speaker is a little bit nervous. Maybe he or she stumbled. You know, sometimes you get tongue-tied and you got a bad and you, you, can't, you just can't say English or it's something just, usually you can't say, you can say it with ease, but on stage you're like, uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 I do not know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it happens for a reason. So if, if there's a reason for it, let me let me search online, search for answers. So I reflected on what I learned from my mentors, from books, from resources, and education I've re I've received throughout my living days on the planet so far, and I realized, hey. They're not that bad, because when used effectively, uns and ahs are good. <laughs> uns and ahs can act as a buffer. They give you a bit of time and space for you to respond instead of react to something. It's like when people say count to 10 when you're furious, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you you dissolve the feeling to punch someone in the face. It works, it works. 
And another example, when your friend shows up in a new dress and goes like, so, how do I look? And you have this urge to say, oh, Lord, you look like a purple hippo stuck in the middle of a confetti explosion. <laughs> With odds and odds, you can say, um, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> and that's how I've never seen you in this color. This is new. I need to get used to this. It, it lessens the chances of you saying something harmful, saying something stupid, or acting or saying something in a way you'll regret, like the moment right after. <laughs> or years after, looking back at it. And I also have a secret hobby of watching acting competitions, and I learned a lot from those. I learned that ahs and uh, ums, they add rhythm to the way you speak, because in a natural conversation, you have ums and ahs and like what nahs, like you know, like, yeah, whatever, it's oh, so, things like that. Uns and odds exist for a reason. They add to the depth of the way you express things. Without them, there, there's no rhythm. It's like no pauses in a song. You can't build that momentum and, and enter into the, the climax of a parallel and without the ums and ums. The, those pauses, the notes, they add flavor to our speeches. So next time, when you feel like I said an oh, I said an oh, I I I stopped talking my speech. Chillax, let that go, because what's important about your speech is always the content, your message. That's what's important. A few ums and ahs, it's no big deal, and when used effectively, it's good. Thank you.